This question is just about the main idea. We've got a kind of long passage, so maybe if you're running short on time, you, you leave this one, but let's give it a shot, see how it goes. So uh, this is Karenin, is Karenin, Karenin, I don't know, is a dog that belongs to Thomas and Teresa. That's what I care about. I don't care about the title. Karenin was not overjoyed by the move to Switzerland from Prague. Karenin hated change. Uh, that seems important. Dog time cannot be plotted along a straight line. It does not move on and on from one thing to the next. It moves in a circle like the hands of a clock, which they too, unwilling to dash madly ahead, turn round and round the face, day in and day out, following the same path. In Prague, when Thomas and Teresa bought a new chair or moved a flower pot, Karenin would look on in displeasure. It disturbed his sense of time. It was as though they were trying to dupe the hands of the clock by changing the numbers on its face. Notice what I underlined. The stuff that makes the easiest sense, right? There's a whole chunk in the middle where, I don't know, there's something about clocks and hands and time moving on in a weird way. And uh, okay, I, I get it, kind of, but I'm not enough to pull anything out of it. So I'm not going to try to summarize that. I will go back to it if I need it. But the stuff I did underline seems pretty obvious. Karenin hated change. The dog hated change. He's looking on with displeasure when a flower pot is moved. I get that. That is easy English, easy to understand. It disturbed his sense of time. That is stuff that you should bare minimum understand. Now, some of you are going to be okay with those pieces and understanding those, and then you go to the choices and start solving the question. Some of you are going to be more bothered by this part in the middle and say, oh, no, I didn't understand that. Let me read it again and try to get more out of it. Nope. Bad idea. You didn't understand it the first time. You don't, you're probably not going to understand it more the second time. Go to the choices. See if the choices even let it matter. It might not matter. So let's look at A. As a dog, Karenin possesses a sense of time that involves a strong preference for predictability and an aversion to disruption. So many of you are going to be confused by the end because you don't know what aversion means, but preference for predictability, Karenin hated change. Hate change means love predictability. Those are clearly the same thing, so that seems good. Now, aversion is definitely a word you should know. That means kind of like a dislike of uh, to disruption, a dislike of uh, disruption. So yeah, if he's upset with a removed flower pot, then that seems right. So this seems good, just based on the parts I already understood reading the passage. Let's obviously try all the other choices and, and make sure, but I don't know, so far so good. B, after he's moved to a new home, Karenin's negative response to changes has become more pronounced. More pronounced, that's a comparison. So more, more pronounced than what? I guess, are we talking about a previous time? Um, he's, they are talking about a move to Switzerland. I see that. Then there's the thing about the dog time. Uh, in Prague, when Thomas and Teresa bought a new chair, Karenin would look on in displeasure, disturb his sense of time. So Prague was the first place, right? So, okay, they're in moved to Switzerland from Prague. So this is two and this is one. So when they're in Prague, it still seems like the dog is upset by change. Are they really comparing Switzerland to Prague? It seems like they're kind of talking about them all at once. They're, they're talking about the dog, not the place. So B is, is taking choice A and, and amplifying it, going even further. It's saying not only does this dog hate change, but the dog also is more or less hating of change in different places, the passage isn't going that far. And, and usually this is how trap answers go on the SAT. They take the right answer and they add something on top of it. They add another layer and they're hoping you don't pay attention to that layer or you like that layer because you're like, oh, it's more detailed. It says more stuff. But more is not better. So we got to be careful there. A is definitely better than B. B is adding something we don't have proof of. C, similar to Thomas and Teresa, Karenin comprehends time as circular rather than as a straightforward progression. Well, here, this is this is getting to that part there that they're trying to trick you with. They know you're not going to understand that, but they know that you're going to think that it's important and you're going to be like, oh, I need a choice that talks about that. C talks about that, but it makes a bigger error. Maybe, maybe this other part is true, but are we comparing the dog to the people? No. Again, we, we have a comparison that the passage is not making. The passage is about the dog. It's not about what the people think. It's about the dog and the dog's own little issues. D, as is the case for other dogs, another comparison, Karen in sense of time seems to accelerate depending on the objects and places that surround him. Again, it's not about a change. This is another kind of like, I don't even know, quantifier maybe word. Um, and then other dogs, are we comparing him to other dogs? I don't think so. It's just about the one dog. So just leave it at that. And hopefully you could have gotten that just based on those things I underlined originally, right? We don't need to understand every word in a passage. 
because main ideas are repeated ideas. If, if something is important, it's going to come up again and again and again. So if you don't understand one instance of it, that's okay. You probably will understand other instances around it. Trust yourself. Trust the way the SAT is structured. You will be able to get a lot of information even when you don't always understand everything that you're reading.